Good morning. Today is November 10th, 2020. My name is Glenn Hall, and this is part 33 of my video series called The Mystery of the Beast. Today's video is called Donald Trump's Mortal Head Wound. Those of you who have been watching these videos understand and know that I believe that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast that is prophesied in Revelation chapter 17. Last week, exactly one week ago, was the 2020 presidential election here in America. At that time, or I should say the day after, the apparent winner was Joe Biden, and Joe Biden has now proclaimed himself president-elect. Anyone watching things, not the mainstream media, but anyone watching any type of alternative news source knows that there was rampant fraud, rampant vote cheating that caused Joe Biden to appear to be the winner of the presidential election. Anyone who has been paying attention for the last four years knows that the mainstream media and all Democrats and all members of the deep state, the deep state is what I call and what the scripture calls Babylon the Great. For the last four years, all of these have conspired together to destroy Donald Trump. I believe there have been literal assassination attempts upon him, evidently quite a few. His name has been slandered repeatedly. There have been online calls for his murder and assassination by many people, uh, especially um, actors and actresses who think that they are something when they are nothing. But all of these forces together have attempted to destroy Donald Trump for the last four years, not least of which was the impeachment debacle from early this year and then COVID-19, which again was something they implemented in order to destroy Donald Trump's chances for being elected president. But of course, Donald Trump masterfully met that challenge But they never did succeed in destroying him until, it appears, the election of 2020. Now, what can he do? Most people believe that Donald Trump cannot now be president. This is Donald Trump's mortal head wound. How could he be the eighth beast? or the eighth head of the beast, if he's not reelected. He couldn't be. So Donald Trump will be elected, will be reelected. And I believe by the date of December 17th, based upon a very important prophetic dream by Dana Coverstone, pastor in the Assembly of God Church, that by the date of December 17th, 2020, Donald Trump will be proclaimed president-elect again. I want to go to a couple of scriptures, well, really quite a few scriptures today, to help everyone understand how I've come to believe this and also to prepare people who listen to this for the future. The first thing is Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. says, It is the glory of God to conceal things, or to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search things out. God has written his word 
in parables. He has written the Bible in parables. And by the way, I want, I want to let you know that everything that I say today, or most everything I say today, can be found in earlier videos. And I'm going to be piecing together many things from those videos that I go into quite a bit of detail earlier to establish. So I will make statements today that you may not agree with. But if you don't agree, don't just tell me you don't agree. You need to go back and listen to all the videos. I have recorded over 20 hours of Bible teaching, and they explain many, many of the mysteries of God. And if you're interested in knowing the mysteries of God, then like a king, search the matter out. Find out whether or not these things that I say are true or not. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search them out. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. The great sea. And four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I looked, its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man. And the mind of a man was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear. It was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I looked, and behold, another, like a leopard with four wings of a bird on its back. And the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stomped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, Let's put this together with Revelation 13. You see here, you, at the beginning, you have three different beasts that are identified. The first was like a lion with eagle's wings. The second, like a bear. And the third was like a leopard. Now go to Revelation, and also it says this. The four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. The great sea is mankind. Chapter 13 of Revelation says, And I saw a beast rising out of the sea. This is the great sea. Had ten horns. Well, you remember from Daniel 7, that last fourth beast we saw had ten horns. But this beast has seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard, and its feet were like a bear's. And its mouth was like a lion's mouth. So see, right away, John has named all three of those specific beasts that Daniel named in chapter 7. All three of them. And not only that, he's named the sea and he's named the ten horns. And to it, that is, to the beast rising out of the sea, the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. Now I want to tell you one of the mysteries here. And this is a very important one to understand. If you go back to Daniel 7, you see that Daniel saw four great beasts coming up out of the sea. So they appear to Daniel to be separate beasts individual beasts. In Revelation chapter 13, you have this beast, singular, coming out of the sea. But this beast has ten horns and seven heads. Okay? The beast itself was like a leopard, 
its feet like a bear's, its mouth like a lion's. Okay, so there's aspects of this one beast that look like the first three beasts that Daniel saw. The answer to this riddle is this. There is one beast. Do you remember who that beast is? The beast is man. We are the beast. We cannot understand this mystery of the beast unless we first understand that we are the beast. We have to get that through our heads. One way to understand that is to consider the birth of Jesus. This is in the Gospels. When Jesus was born, it says that Mary wrapped him in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger. A manger is a feeding trough for animals, a feeding trough for beasts. Jesus was laid into the feeding trough for beasts. The picture, the parable, the prophetic implication of this story is that Jesus is food for the beasts. Well, remember the word that he spoke to the disciples during his ministry on earth where he said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood or you have no life in you. Well, what is that saying? He is our food. Jesus is our food. Does he then expect us to be cannibals? Of course not. Of course not. Yet Satan will and has turned that around and actually has created a bunch of cannibals that were totally unknown to me until Donald Trump became president. And if you research it, you will find that a lot of cannibals, a lot of pedophiles, a lot of murderers, a lot of Satanists have led this world and our government in America for a very long time. So, Jesus is food for the beast. And the beast is us. Jesus is our food. Well, what is Jesus? Jesus is the word that became flesh. Remember when Jesus returns in Revelation chapter 19, there's a sword that comes out of his mouth. I've seen literal pictures that show a sword coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Some people think that's literal. I don't think the artist, certainly the artist would have known that that sword is the sword of the Spirit and is the Word of God. And so he drew that to make a point. But we need to understand and we need to take things in their spiritual context, not in their natural context. So the food that we get from Jesus is the Word. That's why the word is so important. And that's why I have taught repeatedly through these videos from Isaiah chapter 8 that we must speak according to the law and the testimony or there is no light in us. Well, what is the law and the testimony? It's the word of God. It's the Bible. That's where God's law, we find God's law, and that's where we find God's testimony or the history written down by witnesses of God concerning what God has done throughout history. Every false prophet will always attempt to get you to doubt the Bible, will try to get you to doubt the word of God. So we have to go to the law and to the testimony. We have to go to the word of God. We have to eat the word of God, which is to eat the body and blood of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is our food. He is our food. He is food for the beast. And so when we come to the end of the book, when we come to Revelation, we have this further revealing of the beast. And the beast is one. Even though in Daniel chapter 7, it appears that you had four separate beasts. But there's one beast, and that one beast is man. 
He has different heads, though. There are different rulers of men's kingdom, of man's kingdom on earth, that come forth. But they all have one thing in common, and we see what that is here in the end of verse 2 of Revelation 13. And to it, to the beast, the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. Remember, this you, you have this throughout the scripture, and especially clear in the New Testament that Satan is the ruler of this world. And Satan is the dragon. So Satan has given his power and his throne and great authority to the heads of the beast. And we'll continue there in a minute. Okay. Now I want to um, go on to, well, before I go on to verse 3 in chapter 13, remember this idea, there's one beast, but there are seven heads on this beast, seven heads and ten horns. In some of the scriptures that we're going to be reading, the writer John will refer to a head as if it is the beast, the whole beast, you know. Uh, but it's representative of the beast. It's like um, the head of state is representative of the entire government of a country. Donald Trump, the president of America, represents all of America. The head of the beast. Each head of the beast represents the beast at a particular time. And the scripture is clear that there have been seven major heads of the beast. And then Revelation 17 shows us there will be an eighth head. Now it's important for us at this time to review who the, the heads of the beast have been. The first one was Egypt. God delivered Israel out of the land of Egypt. The second head of the beast was Assyria. God delivered the apostate northern kingdom of Israel, basically known as Ephraim, to the Assyrian king in around 720 BC. Then it was around 600 BC that God delivered the apostate southern kingdom, known as Judah, to Babylon. So Babylon was the third head of the beast, and Nebuchadnezzar was the one king that is named as being the head, and that is shown. And he's shown as the head of the huge statue in Daniel chapter 3. Uh, so then after Nebuchadnezzar, we have Cyrus, king of Persia. Persia defeats the Babylonians, so Cyrus, or Persia, is the fourth head of the beast. Then the fifth head of the beast is Greece, headed by Alexander at the beginning. The um, Greece was the fifth head of the beast. The sixth head of the beast is Rome, headed by Caesar. And you have different Caesars. And Rome was the beast that is at the time that John wrote the book of Revelation. And then he said there would come a seventh kingdom. That would be the seventh head. That is the Holy Roman Empire that ruled from around 325 AD up until Donald Trump became president four years ago. Or you could actually say that they're still ruling because Donald Trump has not yet destroyed that head. And it appears that his head has now been destroyed. It appears that he has a mortal wound. Okay, and that's where we are now when we go to verse 3 of Revelation chapter 13. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled 
as they followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast and who can fight against it? See, right here, this head that has the mortal wound is identified with the beast. Now, this beast who has the mortal wound is one of the seven heads. Well, then how could that be Donald Trump, since I just said that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast? Well, we have to go to Revelation chapter 17 to see that. Revelation 17, you should read and reread until you really become familiar with it. But let's start with... Um, Verse 6, and I saw the woman, she's the woman who's riding the beast, okay? She is Babylon the Great, that's her name. Drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Babylon the Great is the one who God attributes all of the death, the deaths of the martyrs to. The word that I use for saints is kodeshim, it means holy ones. Kodeshim is the Hebrew transliteration, and it means the holy ones of God. When I saw her, I marveled greatly, but the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast with seven heads and ten horns that carries her. See, she rode this beast with seven heads. Babylon the Great is the satanic kingdom, the satanic spiritual force the dragon that always ruled the governments of men. So she always rode the beast. Just like when a person rides a horse, that person on the horse controls the horse. It tells the, ho the rider tells the horse where to go. That's what this woman has done. That's what Satan has done through, through the people that he uh, appointed here on earth. Now, Verse 8, we're in chapter 17 of Revelation. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. Now, it, here again, see the beast had seven heads and ten horns. And now what John is doing, he's identifying one of the heads with the whole beast. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. They will marvel to see the beast. Well, look here. In verse 3 of chapter 13, we have that word. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed. And the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. There's this, wow. Wow, about this leader. Amazing. How, how did he do it? How could he have escaped destruction? How has Donald Trump escaped destruction time and time again? Well, let me tell you before we go any further, because this is absolutely critical to understand this. And I'm going to take you to Isaiah chapter 45. And by the way, many prophets... Uh, current church prophets have received this word directly from the Lord that Donald Trump is prophetic Cyrus from Isaiah 45. The, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is God's anointed. In the same way that Cyrus the fourth head of the beast was God's anointed. In the same way that Nebuchadnezzar, the third head of the beast, was God's anointed. They were chosen and anointed, empowered by God, to do specific things in the earth. And they all related to God's people. Pharaoh, with respect to Israel, when Israel is called out. Sennacherib of Assyria with respect to the northern kingdom of Israel when God wanted to judge them. Nebuchadnezzar when God wanted to judge Judah. 
Cyrus when God wanted to restore Judah back to Jerusalem. And then on and on until the day that we have now. And now Donald Trump is God's anointed. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. Now, remember to Cyrus, and Cyrus was the fourth head, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places. God is revealing the secrets of the devil and he is bringing them to light so that they can be judged. That you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me. That people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. This explains why God uses men like Donald Trump. Many people have been offended by Donald Trump. Uh, I just listened to a very interesting sermon by Jeremiah Johnson, a pastor with prophetic gifting, and uh, he recounted the story of Donald Trump approaching uh, Christians, Christian pastors, to support him in his first run for office. And, you know, a lot of them were really skeptical about him, uh, you know, and wondered about how could this be God's man when, you know, you've lived the kind of life you have with several marriages and, you know, so on. And Donald Trump, Jeremiah said, responded to them, you know, you all have lost your voice in the earth. And that's true. The church has lost its voice because the church has not obeyed the word of God. The the church has forsaken the law and the testimony. Almost the entire church has forsaken the law and the testimony. But enough, fortunately, enough of the church has voted for Donald Trump, even this time, that he will be reelected. But the purpose of Donald Trump being elected is so that First, the church will know that God is God, and then that all unbelievers will know that God is God. And so, now we go back to explaining Revelation chapter 17. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it was and is not and is to come. So, this is a riddle. This beast I just showed you is the same beast from Revelation 13, verse 3. The beast, the head with the mortal wound. But at this time, this beast was, that means it had been, But it is not now. It's not currently ruling. This head of the beast is not ruling now. The the head that was ruling at the time this was written was Rome. A Caesar was ruling at this time. But this head was to come. So it was, but it is not. So it no longer is in existence, but it is to come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. Now, it's important to understand mountains are governments in the scripture. And I plan to do a uh, teaching on the mountains of the Lord soon. But mountains are 
governments. So the seven heads are seven governments on which the woman is seated. And I just went through all seven of those governments with you, all the way up until the Holy Roman Empire, which is now coming to an end. The Pope still holds on to power, believe it or not. They are also seven kings. So you have seven kings. I listed those to you, seven names. Five of those kings have fallen. So all of the kings, all the way up through Greece, had fallen by this time. One is, that's Rome, and the other has not yet come. That's the seventh. And when he comes, when he does come, he must remain only a little while. Well, it turns out that that little while is longer than any of the other kings ruled. In fact, it's about 1,700 years from 325 A.D., until 2020 AD. So, seventeen hundred years of the rule of this one that must remain for a little while. But remember, with God, a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. So, if you look at it that way, well, it hadn't even been two days yet, but about two days, and and many of the the prophecies in Scripture deal with two days, two days of walking in the wilderness, and then a third day when Christ begins to rule. But let's keep going here. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, seven governments, on which the woman is seated. They are also seven kings who rule those governments, five of whom have fallen. One is, that's Rome. The other has not yet come, and when he does come, he must remain only a little while. That's the Holy Roman Empire. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven, and it goes to destruction. Okay, there is an eighth beast. It was and is not. Can't be the one that is right now. That's the sixth. It can't be the next one because this eighth is going to replace the the seventh. Okay? So this one that was has to be either the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. Okay? Now, many of you should remember, and I talk about this in, I think it's video 13, Shortly after Donald Trump was elected president, he declared Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel, today's Israel. And shortly thereafter, Israel put out a commemoration coin upon which they put the the likeness of Cyrus with Trump's likeness in front of it. So they had Cyrus and Trump on the same coin. Remember, Cyrus was the one who restored the Jews to Jerusalem. Donald Trump is the one who is preparing today's Jews, today's Christians, for New Jerusalem. He's the one that's getting people ready for the kingdom of God. Donald Trump, therefore, is, it's like a reincarnation of Cyrus. I don't think it's a literal reincarnation of the person Cyrus. I think it's the spirit of Persia that empowered Cyrus. And that that same spirit is empowering Donald Trump. Now, I have to give you some more insight into how the, all of this plays out. It's very interesting. It's very complicated in a way. In Mark chapter 3, and this also, the story occurs in, uh, I think it's Matthew 12. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, he, that talking about Jesus, is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he, Jesus, called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? 
If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. This was a prophecy Donald Trump was always one of them. He was always one of the good guys for the deep state. He gave money to their causes. He gave to Jesse Jackson, Sharpton, all of the race hustlers. He gave money uh, to various groups that were approved by and applauded by the Democrats. But then... God put it into his heart to destroy Babylon the Great, to destroy those people. And that occurs in Revelation 17, and we'll read that in a minute. And so he ran for president, declaring in advance what he planned to do, that he wanted to drain the swamp. And they knew very well what that meant. See, Donald Trump, he doesn't drink. He doesn't use drugs. But he went to their party, so he saw what they did. He knows what they did. He knows what they do. And they knew that he knew what they did. And they were afraid. And they knew that he meant what he said, that he was going to take them down. What was he going to take down? He was going to take down child sex trafficking. He was going to take down their system of government, which is by bribery and by fraud by voter fraud. He was going to destroy their system of power by which they stayed in power. But Donald Trump was one of them. He was part of Satan's kingdom. And when Donald Trump went to war against them, that divided Satan's kingdom. So Jesus here in Mark chapter 3 is really prophesying. What's the prophecy? Verse 26. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end. Now it's interesting. A recent, another recent dream by Dana Coverstone at the very end of the dream a white figure comes forth and stands up in uh, the great room in Congress where the uh, presidential State of the Union address is given. And he declares, and, and Dana believes that this white figure was a representation of Jesus, he declares, a house divided shall not stand. And then he turns around, walks to the back of the room, and slowly turns off all the lights in the chamber, somewhere around 30 or 32 lights. So in the dream that Dana had, there's also this prophecy, this house, Satan's house, Satan's kingdom shall not stand. Now, I have to take you to another scripture at this point. because it's critical to understand this. This is 2 Thessalonians chapter two. And this is one of the key scriptures concerning the coming of the Lord. I'm sure you all have heard it many times. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. Now, A lot of scriptures say, unless the apostasy comes first, 
and many people think that this is dealing with Christian apostasy from truth. It isn't, because Christians have been apostatized from the truth forever. The actual word means divorcement, a stepping away from a state of being, a divorce like when a husband and wife divorce. Or like when someone separates himself from the evil part of Satan's kingdom. That's a divorcement. That's what Donald Trump did. He divorced themselves from the evil of Satan's kingdom. For that day will not come unless the divorcement comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. What happened when Donald Trump did this? Wasn't the man of lawlessness revealed? What have we seen for the last four years but rampant lawlessness? Congressmen who get up and lie to the American people like Adam Schiff, who says that he has certain evidence against Donald Trump, who who pretends that he's reading a certain communication from Donald Trump, and it turns out to be a lie, but he said it Publicly, he said it in the House as a representative of this nation, and it was a lie. It was lawless. And then they proceeded with an impeachment without any rules of civil procedure, without any due process toward Donald Trump, without any equal protection under the law toward Donald Trump, and in the House of Representatives declared Donald Trump guilty. It was lawless. The man of lawlessness was revealed. And then it culminated seven days ago in the election of 2020 when we had rampant fraud trying to elect a senile old man as president of the United States. The man of lawlessness has been revealed. Now what does that tell us then? Well, go back to the beginning of that verse. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the divorcement comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. That means Jesus can come now. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. Jesus can now come. Okay, now that we have the context here of Revelation 17 and the time of Donald Trump, let's go ahead and continue here. Verse 11 of chapter 17, As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven and it goes to destruction. Destruction in the word of God deals with coming to a destruction of our selves, of our souls, and coming into the truth of the gospel. So it's going, Donald Trump is going to the destruction of his own worldliness, and he's coming in, he will come into the fullness of faith in God. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings, who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings, for one hour together with the beast. That's a very short period of time because most of the other scriptures, or well, most of the other times in the book of Revelation deal with, for example, 42 months or 1260 days or a time times and half a time, which most people believe is three and a half years, which exactly corresponds to 42 months and to 1260 days. So one hour is a very short period of time. So they receive authority with the beast, that is with Donald Trump for one hour. So he will have many kings of this world, many men in authority with him. These are of one mind and they hand over their power and authority to the beast, to Donald Trump. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them. 
will overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. We're going to be seeing a time, I believe, when Donald Trump overtly fights against the Christians, the the Kodeshim, the truly faithful Christians. But because of other prophecies, I don't think that Donald Trump is actually going to kill them. It's going to be a time, this is going to be a time of a testing of faith, and it's going to be a time where many people come into the fullness of their faith, but it's going to be a short time, and at, at the end of that time, Donald Trump is going to be radically saved by God. But let's go on. And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. Okay, so the prostitute was seated upon the whole world. And the prophecy in Daniel 7 of the fourth beast was a, a beast that was so different that it stomped the entire earth and it, it really took over the whole earth. And that's, that's the kingdom that Donald Trump is destroying. He is actually destroying the, um, the one world government that has controlled everything up until this time for quite a few years. Verse 16, And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. You see, Donald Trump and the kings aligned with him hate the deep state. They hate the child trafficking. They hate the pedophilia. They hate the satanic sacrifice. The kingdom of Satan has been divided. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. That great city is Babylon the Great, and it goes by many names. New York, Chicago, L.A., London, Jerusalem, on and on, Beijing, through the great city, Tokyo, through the great cities of the earth. But spiritually, it is called Babylon the Great. I'm going to read verse 17 again. For God has put it into their hearts, that is the beast and the ten ten kings, to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. I want to take you back to Isaiah 45. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped. Just as God anointed Cyrus, king of Persia, God has anointed Donald Trump to fulfill his purposes. To anoint means to cover with oil or to pour out his spirit upon. So God has empowered Donald Trump to do a specific work, even though he does not know God, just like Cyrus did not know God. I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. Same can be said of Donald Trump. But God is empowering Donald Trump to do his work and his will. There is an Indian prophet 
first name is Sadhu, and I can't remember his last name, but you can find him, S-A-D-H-U. <coughs> he spoke in California just last month and prophesied that Donald Trump was God's anointed and that he needed to be elected. And he, he seriously admonished Christians to pray for Donald Trump's re-election. And he specifically said that he was shown that God has appointed three angels to protect Donald Trump. Three angels. Can you imagine three angels being assigned to one man? That's incredible power. So God has anointed Donald Trump so that Donald Trump will be able to fulfill the words of God. Now that was all of chapter 17. Chapter 18 is all about the fall of Babylon and it it details the fall of Babylon. Babylon itself has become the dwelling place for demons. Unfortunately, there are still many, many Christians in Babylon. Jeremiah Johnson, in his, in his recent uh, sermon, which was this past week after the election, said that a study was done of Christians and that it uh, found that 46% of professing Christians voted for Biden and 54% voted for Trump. The 46% who voted for Biden are people who are still in Babylon the Great. And verse 4 says this, Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. For her sins are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. The time for the judgment of Babylon the Great is at hand. Yet God is still calling his people to come out of Babylon the Great. Hopefully there will, there will be repentance for people still. I don't know how there can be because I think that there have been some of them who have committed the uh, unforgivable sin, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. They call good evil and evil good. And I don't think that they're going to be able to repent in this lifetime. There will come a time later when they'll be able to repent, but it will not be in this age and it will not be in the next age. The next age is the kingdom of God, the millennial kingdom that is coming. Now, I'm praying for more revelation concerning the events that we see in Revelation chapter 13 with respect to this eighth beast, the beast that received a mortal wound. And I'm going to wait until the next video to get into that. I think this gives everyone enough to... Uh, go forward with in order to understand the times that we live in now. We need to continue praying for Donald Trump. I know it's a very strange thing that we, we are praying for the beast, the head of the beast, who the Bible prophesies is going to persecute the Kodashim. That's a very strange thing. I understand that. It's also strange when you consider how loyal Daniel was to Nebuchadnezzar who killed and persecuted the Jews. Nevertheless, Nebuchadnezzar was God's anointed. Daniel recognized that. Daniel was put in a place of service to that king and he honored that service. Something we need to remember with respect to God's anointed is this. It's the story of David and Saul. When it became clear to Saul that David was winning approval in the kingdom, Saul became jealous and attempted to kill David. 
David was the one that God had chosen to replace Saul. And Saul tried to kill David. Now remember, there was a time when David and his men, they, you know they fled from Saul, and there was a time when they were in a cave, deep in a cave, and Saul came into the cave, the Bible says, to relieve himself. So he was there alone. David sneaked up upon him, cut off the edge of his garment, and then waited and then told Saul later that he was there and Saul knew he could have killed him and David didn't kill him. And then later, finally, in a battle when it was time for Saul's reign to end, Saul was uh, killed in battle and a man runs to David with the news that Saul has been killed and he claimed credit for killing Saul. And David looked at him and said, did you not fear to put out your hand against God's anointed? I'm giving this word today because we need to understand that Donald Trump is God's anointed. I'm making this video before he's declared the victor of the 2020 election. When he is declared the winner of the 2020 election, you will know that he had a mortal wound that was healed. And you will further know that he is the eighth head of the beast and that he has been called by God in order to do the work that he is doing, which is to destroy Babylon the Great. And so I further am giving this word in order to encourage you not to kill and not to speak against the Lord's anointed. God will protect his own. God will protect us. God is going to do a work that you would not believe if it were told you. That work is coming. In the name of Jesus, amen.